our new forms, 20 years, it's really hard to imagine that it was 20 years ago. It seems like it was yesterday. Uh, it changed my life in so many different ways, I can't even begin to explain. But the fact that we're still here talking about it 20 years later is great. There was this underbelly of, you know, rave culture and rebellion that was happening in the early 90s. People were going out and setting up sound system fields and people were, you know, gathering in illegal places and making music which kind of resonated with what was going on with the government at the time. And people were just looking for this outlet, this, this, this way of being able to, 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 to focus their energy, to put their energy out there in a, in a positive way without it, you know, interfering with what was going on in, say, the, the, the normal everyday living life, nine to five kind of job territory. We had to create this own environment for ourselves, and that was going out and raving and being around like-minded people, then working out how could we turn this into our careers, how, how could we make this our job, our life, and going into the studios and making sure that you're making music and then starting the record label. Uh, I watched the music evolve from being this rave sound, which is like pretty much, you know, geared towards kids going out in fluorescent tops and experimental music and, you know, drug culture, which then changed into people actually saying, OK, you know what, we can actually make this into festivals and we can make this into where people, something that where people can go to and they can enjoy it uh, on a level where it became their business. And that music, so that spawned out of that was, was drum and bass music. And the way that it, it changed the, the culture for me was the, the basic elements of people coming together with, with the same ideas. Well, the first rave that I went to, or the first party that I went to, uh, that had an impact on me was Castle Morton. Obviously, there was parties before that, but Castle Morton was the one where, you know, it was well documented that, you know, you know, 100,000 people stayed on this farm for a week and they never moved and the atmosphere was great and the police didn't interact until about a week later, but it was something that was quite special. There were so many different elements of the music. There was techno here, there was some reggae over there, there was some hip hop, there was jungle just starting to come through. You know, drum and bass at that stage still wasn't a music. I think what would happen for me personally with my friends, we would be walking around Castle Morton and then you'd be stood in the middle of this field and you could hear these reggae bass lines over here, these electro drums over there, you could hear these break beats over here, and you make up your own music in your head. It was like this whirlwind of, of the hurricane of music that was like circling around you. And that was like the first party where, when we went back home to Bristol, we went to the studio and we sat there and we were like, yeah, and we take a piece of this and took a piece of that. And, you know, we put the, our experience from Castle Morton into into one record and you know kind of different kind of crazy New Forms is um, a record that was a progression we were putting that music on Four Cycle and V Recordings which are two record labels that I was associated with at the time and we were releasing a lot of music we were very productive putting out singles like one a month two a month some under Ronnie Size, some under another name I used to have called Mask. I released a record called Freeway Split. You know, you're, you're in this box, you're in this bubble. You, you know, you're just working, you know, you don't shave, you don't comb your hair, you don't even wash for a few weeks. You're just making music, you're going out, you're DJing. You know, you don't really, no, you're not conscious about what you're doing whatsoever. Um, when new forms kind of started to become a reality was when I got signed to to Mercury Music, uh, Mercury Records, and to, to Talking Loud and Giles Peterson. And that's when New Forms was, became a reality. And no, we didn't know what we was doing, but we had a budget to be able to enable us to do what we spoke about doing. So i.e. we had money to go to, to invite a bass player or invite a drummer, buy equipment, go to us, build a studio. It was like the happiest days of my life because I remember going to the Dole office uh, you know, housing benefit or whatever it was. I remember signing off because I got a job with Talking Loud and that was 
that was amazing, do you know what I mean? Just be able to, to know that I didn't have to depend on the government no more. That was like, that was cut. We had the money now to be able to do what we did uh, with New Form, which was to go and record the stuff in the proper studio and live our dreams. The Mercury Music Prize is something that always comes up and, you know, I can have a, a very, very clear, transparent view of my opinions of the Mercury Music Prize. First and foremost, uh, when we were nominated, I'd never even heard of the Mercury Music Prize. It was something that was out of my jurisdiction, so to speak. But we was touring. We uh, had released the album already on Talking Loud and it was doing, doing okay. It wasn't doing great, but then we got nominated and then a lot of people started to talk. And the underbelly in drum and bass in, in jungle at that time, uh, more so jungle on the rave scene, was quite monotonous. It was, you know, it was only a few people that are really making changes, uh, i.e. people like Goldie, I think people like Adam F, and there was a few other people who were making uh, long players at that time. But for me, the Mercury Music Prize, we, we were touring, we heard about that on nomination, actually coming off tour, going to the actual event, get into the event, uh, we went there in a minivan, squashed together, all cramped up in a minivan, got to the event. Still not really aware of the significance of the, of the prize. We were starving, we sat down, we had food, we ate all the food, you know what I mean? We did our performance, we performed, it was great performance, really enjoyed it, uh, and then we got drunk. And then we was just gonna let our hair down, so to speak, and just chill out, do what we do, just hang out, go meet some people. We knew people like Chemical Brothers and I knew a, a lot of the other uh, bands that were there. So we just wanted to just hang out. And I think it was about 10 minutes from the end of the evening when, before the, the announcement that someone come up to me. I think it was uh, like Fotec um, or Eddie Izzard, I'm not sure, one of the two who came up to me and they're like, Ronnie, we just heard through the great room. I think, think you guys have got it. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And then we didn't pay no attention. We just carried on getting drunk, sat there. Then the next thing you know, they announced the winner and then they pronounced my name wrong. They were really size, which uh, to, to this day, I still find quite amusing, but that is the way to spell it. R O N I is Rooney, but is Rooney size and represent. And we we're a collective and it was for all of us. And every person that was there, a part of it, myself, Crust, Die, Sav, Dynamite, Onnelly, Cy John, and Clive Dima, um, without forgetting management and Jumping Jack Frost and Brian G. Everyone was there to experience it. It was a, an amazing feeling. I come from a school which I got thrown out of. I've got no qualifications, I've got no exams. Um, I've never had a job, but I've got a Mercury Music Prize. So with this New Forms Deluxe Edition, it was obvious to me that I had to make people aware that I'm going to celebrate it. It was so significant, this 20 year. It only comes around once. So I've had to put everything else that I've been doing since 2010 on hold. Uh, I made a conscious decision to put the third Represent album on the back burner. It's kind of sitting there, you know, it's in the barrel of the gun. We're just waiting to pull the trigger. but. We had to say, you know what, this is a real, um, you know, it's a milestone. Really need to sit down and make people aware of this record, you know, because there's music on there that was made over 20 years ago. And some of the people that are going out to these uh, raves and to these parties weren't even born. They're still like 18, 19 years old. So the music still stands the test of time. So I made a decision to approach Universal. Uh, and asked them for all my um, catalogue. I was going to put it together myself and put it out on my own label, but Universal stepped in and they goes, no, we want to do it. And that's been such a, a relief. They've done an amazing job, it's been fantastic. Uh, it's been a whirlwind and the music on there is, is fantastic. We've got some remixes that I've never been heard before from people like New Rick and Soul, uh, Kuda, Dorfmeister, The Groove Rider, uh, DJ Krust, uh, Fotec, Takamuru. So what we've managed to do is to bring all of the remixes and the edits that people haven't heard and put it all onto one record because there was the New Forms and there was New Forms uh, double CD and then there was New Forms Replica and there was New Forms 2008. So the challenge was, was to bring all that together and to make it special 
So that's when I went back into the studio and had to get the hard drives, go and get all the discs, and then go into the studio and then re-edit everything and just make it all sound like it was modern today. And that is, that's, that's it in a nutshell. So it's been a year worth of processing, but you know, I had to go into Universal Office and I had to sell it to them. And to be fair, my passion just jumped out. You know, uh, I hit them with a, with a straight line system uh, and next thing I know they, they were on board and it's been a great, great experience. Step to the rhythm made out of brown paper. Well, currently I'm on, on, on tour. I'm touring uh, New Forms, uh, the anniversary show. It's a, it's a light box, it's a lot of visuals. It's not Represent. Represent is an eight-piece band, so I'm touring this, uh, this show. It's just me. It's like a, a standalone show with a light box. It's really exciting. I'm touring uh, next year in the UK. I've just come out from Australia and New Zealand. I was well received there, and I'm off to America on the 5th of December. And uh, I've got a few shows around uh, Europe, like Turkey and Italy. But next year is going to be touring a few more days of new forms, and then there's all new music from there on. Uh, hopefully, I can start now uh, getting back on to that track and that vision which I had about trying to release all new music. My people, they want me to release new music, but I'm kind of caught in this catch-22 where there's people that they want me to stay in this 1997 bubble and they don't want me to change, but I'm an artist and artists, they, they need to change. And then you have these new artists who've never even heard of me and they want to hear new music. They, they, they want to know what Ronnie Size has got. What is all the fuss about? And I can't wait to be able to tick all those boxes and let them know this is what the fuss is about. So I'm looking forward to putting out lots of new music next year.